I decided that I wanted to give racing a try, but I knew that the chances of being a race car driver were probably slim to none. To come down and, and be challenging the good old boys from the South was a challenge. It wasn't, we weren't always accepted. It was just situations like that. You felt like given the opportunity, you could have done more in the sport. I did not know this. You attended Alfred State University and you got your associate degree in mechanical engineering. I decided that I wanted to give racing a try as a driver, but I knew that the chances of being a race car driver, a farm boy from upstate New York, were probably slim to none. So I decided I better get an education first. I, so went off and got a two year, as you said, a two year degree at Alfred State University in mechanical engineering. Gave myself five years. Said if I can't make a living at it or I don't see any improvement at the end of those five years, I'll just go back to college and figure something else out. Jeff Bodine, the young driver out of Shemong, New York. He is Jeff Bodine's younger brother. We've had so many brothers come through the sport and, and have success. That's pretty rare that three brothers can have enough talent to come and be successful in the top form of motorsports. Jeff was really, the, to me, the pioneer because he took it from just being a local thing and a kind of a hobby for, for the family to making it a profession and a professional sport that we could all learn to make a living at. Was there ever a time where, whether it was you and Jeff, you and Todd, Todd and Jeff, got into it on the racetrack and maybe it was a little bit of a heated moment? Jeff and I kind of got into it. Uh, we got into it in a bad way. We went down in the third turn, and he gave me a little tap in the back bumper getting in the three, and I saved it. And I lost, lost my temper. I made the worst decision in my racing career ever in that next six seconds when I went over in the fourth turn and spun my brother out. Oh, and a Jeff Bodine spins coming off turn four right in front of the entire field. Never expected he'd do it. He's my brother, I still love him, but he spun me out. Well, Je Brett Bodine, I keep calling you Jeff Bodine because you drove like Jeffrey. Brett, when you came down from the north, how tough was that to move from New York and come down here to what was then a southeastern sport? People don't like outsiders coming in and taking their lunch Sacred money. Sacred ground. That's it. <laughs> so when do you feel like you were accepted? I think I was accepted the day I got in a ham car because that was the next year when I got voted most popular driver. I went from an outsider to most popular <laughs> driver. Fighting to get created the most popular driver. In one season. <laughs> I was still looking for my first oval track win in NASCAR. We win at North Wilkesboro. What do you remember about that race? Well, I remember coming to three quarters of the way through the race and you made a call uh, that today is pretty common, but back then it wasn't very common. And that was the short pit. Yep. When Dale Earnhardt finally makes his pit stop and comes off pit road, we go by him going into turn one. Immediately, the caution comes out. Elmo Langley, God rest his soul, pace car driver for many years, made a mistake, and he picked up the wrong leader. Mm -hmm. He picked up Dale Earnhardt, not us. Here he comes off the fourth corner. He's going to do it. Brent Bodine wins the first Union 400. For four years, we've been threatening on short tracks. We've won on the road courses, but it's finally become a reality. This might be the happiest driver you've ever seen in your life. In my book, you got one of the coolest jobs that you can have in NASCAR. You drive the pace car. I mean, that has to be pretty cool. It's our responsibility to sign off on that racing surface once we've had an incident and a cleanup. We've got to get control of the field, getting ahead of the leader so we can open pit road. It's not just driving around at 45 or 60 mile an hour in front of the field. You're, you're responsible for making decisions for the race director. I love my job. I love this company. Dedicated my life to motorsports, and I'm working for the best sanctioned body in the world. At the end of the day, what do you want people to remember Brett Bodine for? What would be the Brett Bodine legacy? Being a great dad. That's the most important to me. That's awesome. I mean, everything else is just, it just happened. Yeah. That's what I did. For me to bring my kids here, I'm not trying to make race car drivers out of them, but I'm trying to expose them to the sport that I fell in love with. And if they can somehow fall in love with that sport too, mission accomplished. 
I'm in a great place. This reminds me of home.